Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time it is while you're watching this. And we've all been in the position of looking at a shiny new bike in a showroom and thinking, I'll have me one of them, but we then have to look at how to pay for it. The example I'm going to give is based on the new Royal Enfield 450 engine Himalayan. Buying the bike only with a purchase price of 5,750 quid, so there aren't any options or anything else included in this. And remember, everything in here is how I would look at financing a bike and my preferences. One thing to know is that my credit score is probably fairly appalling. Not because I'm a bad debtor, because I paid my mortgage off early. I always put money on my credit card before I spend it. And there's a good reason for that, which I'll cover at the end. And I don't have any loans or store cards. And the only uh, mobile phone contract I have is a fixed one that also costs my landline and broadband. So most finance companies won't look at giving me a favourable rate. Why is that? It's because I have no recent history of actually paying back a debt. So uh, even if you're good with your money, you can get penalised when it comes to getting a loan or finance out. I prefer other people helping me offset the cost of my bike. And I don't mean having an OnlyFans channel where I think I look like this, but actually I look like this. No, that's not me. I don't have any tattoos. I mean saving up. Advantages to this are obvious. People are paying you interest, you're not paying other people interest. Disadvantages, you can't get the bike no, straight, straight away, away and over the you period can't get the bike straight up, away the and of the over the period you're saving up. So you're looking at a shiny new, new higher target. Up. So there you have to chase a new advantages higher target. target. Unlike the finance, of if something unforeseen happens up. and you have to find some money for it or reduce paying into your regular savings, you can do. You're so not going to be looking at so uh, paying a large into your regular debt unforeseen debt happens your finances and, your debt and thinking sat in, you're oh, crap. You're not going to be looking at because in some of the unforeseen happens and you don't own the bike. You can't keep it if you can't unforeseen happens and if you can't keep up the now and you can't afford it outright, then you're going to have to pay extra for it. There's various options for this, bank loan, higher purchase, the dreaded PCP, and I'll come on to that in a bit, and the even more dreaded credit card. Awarding these coloured stars, uh, sorry Jim, I know you're not going to be able to see these, the saving up a green star, reason being, I'm putting the money in when I can afford to, if I need it, I can get it, and people are paying me to buy the bike. The bank loan gets a yellow star because in some circumstances you can get a lower interest rate than higher purchase or PCP and you actually own the bike. If you default on the loan, yes it's a problem but they can't take the bike away from you. You may have to tell it to repay it but if you need it for transport it's still yours. And these days you can look at various ways of restructuring debt, but hopefully you won't get into that situation. Higher Purchase and PCP both get orange stars. Reason for this, you don't own the bike until you've paid all the money. They look like good deals, but you need to think about them. And finally, a red star is the credit card. It should have a bit of a green border on this because you will own the bike, but credit card interest rates are phenomenal. If you look at an American Express advert, the Interest rates on those are somewhere in the region of 70 to 80 percent. My one has gone up from 17 percent to 30 percent in the last couple of months. Also, you might get things like cash back and vouchers and things like that. But who's paying for it? You are in the extortionate interest rates. The only good thing about credit cards, if you change every so often, you can get zero percent balance transfer. But that's going to be capped. You're not going to be able to put six thousand pounds balance transfer on a credit card for 12 months, then swap again when you've paid it down to five thousand pounds. So let's have a look at some works examples of finance. Now, all the financing I'm looking at here is based on a quick look online for loans and money saving expert site to do some calculations as well. I found a loan rate on a comparison site of 7.9%. Obviously, you have to apply for this, get credit checked and everything else. And mine might be higher than this because, as I mentioned, my credit rating isn't going to be that good. So in this particular one, to buy the bike, a loan of 7.9% without putting any deposit down, over three years, you're paying 727 quid in interest. That's probably a few accessories. It might even be a complete set of luggage on a Himalayan. And you're paying 179 quid a month. Looking at a Royal Enfield deal, which may no longer be available, the interest rates here are 9.9% for higher purchase or PCP. 
Cash price is the same in both cases, but you've got to put down £500 deposit. 499 we'll call it 500 quid. And the example will show you how much credit you've got, which in both cases is 5,251 quid, and how much you're going to be repaying a month. On higher purchase, the £168 and change is going to be for the entire 36 months. It will not change, there will not be a big payment at the end. And you're paying £750 quidish over the price of the bike to get it on HP. On PCP, it's worse. You are restricted on your annual mileage, which are not on higher purchase, and your monthly payments initially are lower but the final one is well over 1,700 quid. And you're actually paying back 1,400 quid over the four years. That's going to be the first year's insurance, some accessories and servicing when you think of it in that way. Now, I don't think the final payment here is optional. I think you have to pay it and have the bike. I don't think there's a handback option, but we will be looking at handback options based on this in a bit. Now this is the one that I find absolutely terrifying. A 29.9% interest rate on a credit card to buy the bike, 5,750 quid, sees you paying over three grand in interest and 243 quid in monthly repayments. So overall, unless you save up for the bike, you're gonna be paying somebody else extra for the pleasure of having it. Yes, you may need to. I'm in the fortunate position of never having to, but this isn't the same as everybody else. The savings example I'm looking at here is at 0% interest, you'll get more than 0%. So if you're looking at saving up the money for the 450 Himalayan, over a year you're looking at 480 quid, and if you're going to save up over four years, you're looking at 120 quid per month with various options in between. Note that these figures are rounded up to the nearest £10, although they are sort of £479.15 pence or something for the uh, one year calculation. The chances of having to put up with the 0% savings rate are about the same as me getting a date with Karen Gillen. So I did find some others online. These are based on you saving a certain amount over one year to get the fixed interest rate. I think after that the interest rates are probably going to drop to about 2%. So again, this is just figurative and based on my non-financial expert guessing. So at 4% for one year and then 2% for two years, after one year you'll have 1,960 quid saved. And after three years, you'll be able to buy the bike, have a bit left over, and you'll have been paid 50 quid for the pleasure of buying the bike. Probably not available for much longer. Here I found one at 6% where you could chuck in up to 250 quid a month. Again, you'd have to put this in every month. So after a year, you've got just under 3,100 quid and you can buy a bike outright in one year and 11 months. And you have been paid over 100 quid to get this. Having a closer look at the PCP example as well, it's also a bit misleading on the monthly payment because if you take the final monthly payment into account as well, you're actually looking at uh, about £35 a month extra you've got to find to uh, pay that off. I did also mention that I couldn't find a handback price. Now, a lot of times you get PCP, have a bike for three years, or in this case four, hand it back at the end, or buy it, or use what was known as the balloon payment to finance another bike, which you'll be paying interest on and and paying to actually own the bike again. So I don't actually look at that as being a very good deal. So when I looked online, I couldn't find a four year old 12,000 mile Himalayan. I did find a four year old one for a couple of thousand pounds and one at two years old with 12,000 miles on it for two and a half thousand pounds. Although that did have lots of extras. So at the end of the PCP term, if you didn't buy the bike, you'd be looking at paying an extra three to eight hundred quid for getting an equivalent Himalayan. If you wanted something else, you wouldn't have anything to trade in against it. So you're looking at another PCP, saving up or a loan or higher purchase all over again. And you might want to look at who's actually gaining from these purchases. All in all, to buy a bike, I would much rather save up and buy it outright. If something happens and I do need to get a loan, say halfway through, a three-year saving plan at least I've got 18 months worth of savings that I'm not going to be paying the interest on any form of finance where you don't own the bike especially if you're restricted on mileage or at worst the credit card 
and the advice everywhere you look is use a credit card very sparingly. Now at the start I mentioned that I put money on a credit card before I spend it. There's a very good reason for this. When I was taken off of my bike it was at the end of the month. My credit card bill would have come a couple of weeks later. I was in hospital for a month so I would effectively have been in default on my credit card bill through no fault of my own. I don't have any family so there was nobody else to pay it for me and my wallet ended up in the custody of the police not with me. So I'd have been a bit stuffed trying to get a friend to pay it as well on my behalf. Well that wraps up an extremely boring set of figures there's going to be another one soon because I'm comparing the price of running the Himalayan and the Tracer for 12,000 miles hopefully see you on the road if we get a nice day or in the next film ta-ta for now